الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونسلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد So where we left last week Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after describing the three groups Muslims non-Muslims and the hypocrites had a long discussion about the people of book how they were favored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on multiple occasions and their attitude was such of, an, of someone who is quite insolent, completely oblivious to the favor and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than being appreciative, they were quite ungrateful. With that background, it would appear to certain people of the current time, the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they are hearing all the criminal acts done by the people of Rome, that perhaps there's no chance for us anymore. We are done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not happy with us. Allah said, mm-hmm. So for that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought one ayat here. It is a very special ayat. And it has, on one hand, given a very good hope and expectation to the people of book, but also connected another problem, which is, Sometimes there is a sense of arrogance, a pride. We are better. People of book, especially Jewish people, they had this idea and that would come in later in the Quran where they say, Nahnu abda No, we are the children of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are his beloved, we are loved ones. So we are not going to go to hell by evil. If we did, it would be only for a day or a half a day, a part of the day. This is what they claim would be. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to correct that arrogant attitude and also for us as Muslims to not think that once you have been favored, it's forever. You have to work hard to maintain it. Yes, you've been given the favor by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the barakah and blessings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yet you have to maintain it. Till you breathe your last. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dispelled a lot of those possible, uh, possible problems, hence this particular ayah, which we'll start today with inshallah ta'ala. But that, that's what I just said uh, in, in summary. To making it making it very clear that no matter what you have done before, even if you have done all those crimes and you want to change your life for good. The door of Tawbah is open. You can come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever happened before, happened. Move on. Start a new leaf of your life. It's completely easy. And as I said, making sure that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive people from before whatever mistakes they have made without giving any consideration to their color, creed, or race. Like it is not about Jewish people especially. It's for everyone. Now, if you keep that in your mind, hopefully there'll be little confusion. Now, there is an incident being mentioned by some of the Mufassirun. Imam Kathir, for example, brought this. Uh, Salman Farsi, Salman from Persia, when he came to Rasulullah after his long journey in quest of truth, he finally managed to be with Rasulullah and he then started mentioning some of the good attributes of the people from his family, from his group. They were majors, sabis, they were, you know, worshippers of fire, you know, Zoroastrians. So, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our forefathers, our family, our community, we used to praise and we were waiting for a prophet and we were this and we were this and we were this. Uh, so, and obviously I've left them now. What would happen to them? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that they've been held fire. So obviously that was a time when he got very upset about it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then revealed this particular ayah. There's some weakness in this narration, but this is one of the reasons why the ayah was revealed. That whatever happened in the past has happened. If they, even now, accept the truth and do the good deeds, they have no blame, no problem, no concern. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
قد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين آمنوا والذين هادوا والنصارى والسابئين والصابئين من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر وعمل صالحا فلهم أجرهم عند ربهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون إن indeed الذين دوز آمنوه بليج وآن الذين دوز هادوا became Jews دوز who become became Jews وآن والنصارى النصارى دوز who became these the Christians what and asabi the magians the zoroastrians man amana whoever amana believed be in allah in allah wa an al yawm al akhir and the last day the day al akhir last wa an amila did salih and good deed did good action he has done good deeds fa so la for him, for whom, for whom, for them, ajr, for them is reward, hope their reward, in the, with or near, Rabb, Lord, in their Lord. So they have their reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will get it. It's all been preserved, kept for them. Wa and la, no khawf, no fear, ala, upon him, them, wa an la, no, neither will be, whom them, they will not be aggrieved, they will not be feeling remorseful, yahzanu, they will not be sad, will be no huzn somewhere. Now, this ayah would raise few questions if you do not know the background and if you do not look, look at everything. Taking this ayah on face value means what? Whether you are Muslim, believer, or you are Christian, or Jewish, or Median, by extension, anyone. If you believe in Allah and the last day, and you did all the good deeds, whatever good deeds, you're saved, you're done. Means you do not need to believe in Muhammad. You do not need to believe in Quran. You do not need to believe in, you know. You do not need to believe in angels. Is that the thing? Alhamdulillah, Muslims never misunderstood this. But in the modern time, there is this concept of perennialism. Perennialist. Perennial means for everyone. Everyone is equal. Everyone is good. Whoever does good deed is good. Whatever religion you have, doesn't matter. And there are certain Muslims who adopted that and especially those people who came from the west they were christian or jewish before and they came to islam in the modern time and they took on board this idea i wouldn't say that it was sentimentally close to them because they had a background and i cannot completely deny that there's a possibility deep down somewhere rather than being very objective there is this Sentiments attached to it. My people, all of these people, and the, some of them are fantastic. I mean, their character is so beautiful that you would like them to be in general. Your friends, your, you know, even your family members. So now you are Muslim, but they are not. They have left the world way before. What would happen to them? It's a big, you know, psychological dilemma to be in, where you have to square the circle. They are very good. They have been fantastic. They have raised me in the best way. And here I have some of the 
ugliest Muslims with their character, with their behavior and attitude. Whether it's good, even if they are. So this ayat for them is something to cling on to. So they've taken that and they ran away. They said, it doesn't matter which, which religion you believe in, as long as you have belief in Allah and the day after, life day after, and you do all the good deeds, then you are sorted. But that's completely wrong, Aqeedah. There's no question about it. Among Ahli Sunnah wal Jama'ah, among any Muslims, traditionally, deen is only Islam. Inna deen inda Allah in Islam. Nothing short of that would be accepted as salvation. So we'll come to that in a minute. But before that, there's a small doubt. If this is an invitation to the people of book, with the background that they've been given the story of their ancestors doing all their atrocities and showing this regard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favors. So now why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning even believers here? In the Ladina, Amanu. Magic question, quite, quite an interesting question. You understand the question? What they're saying, so in the beginning I mentioned the reason this ayat has been brought here as Jumla Mu'tariba, something in between as it's in a side tracking or you know just taking off tangent a little bit with the background of all the you know crimes being mentioned one after the other, and there'll be one after that straight away. We carry on. The list of their ingratitude has hasn't com hasn't been completed yet. Carrying on now. But in between, there's this one statement in the Ladina Aman. It is to give them a bit of a respite, support them, don't feel dejected, don't feel despondent that there is no way out. There is. It's always hoping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. So the question is if this is the case for people of book or others, so why Muslims have been mentioned there? In the Ladina Aman. Answer is very simple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Quran which covers everything up to the end of time. Even if you take one ayat in isolation, many a time, if you have in-depth understanding of Sharia, you can pick those points here and there. In this particular ayat, if you just took it on face value, all is saying it, if you believe in Allah and all the aqaid, the aqidah is clear, your actions are clear, then you are done. So, including Muslims. So, Muslims have to stay on their toes, so to say. You can't be just thinking, since I believe once, I'm okay forever. No, no, no. You have to stay on the track. You still have to keep your good deeds and your belief intact till you breathe your last. You can't be satisfied and completely, like, you know, relaxed about the aqidah and your action. So it's just to make sure that they do not forget. And when the king mentioned it, he mentioned everything. When the rule comes, it just covers everything. Obviously, it doesn't directly affect the Muslims, but we have to be aware of that. And it also hints to the point, as I said, there's no favoritism. It is not because you're born in a certain family that you'll be given preference over someone else who's not been born in a Muslim family. Not at all. We do not believe in that racial preference to individuals to the point that even the family of Rasulullah if someone has not followed his way he will not be saved on the day of judgment from hellfire even if it's from his own family members as we know in case of Abu Lahab uh, mentioned in the Quran true uncle blood relative next door neighbor only this believer from the time of Rasulullah mentioned in the Quran. The only one person, Abu Lahab. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Yeah, so hinting to that, you still have to do all the right thing. And truly with sincerity, with all the good actions. Now, this concept of parallelism, I already mentioned it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would use some succinct words, sometimes hinting to only a basic idea. Amila amadan salihan, for example, the good action. What does it mean, good action? Any good action? Or there is a clear boundary. 
there is good action boundary, which is guided by the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We know what good actions mean. It includes your prayer, it includes your zakat, fasting, food, and food, being nice to people. So there's a clear guideline. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not give you a whole list here. And you have to take Quran, Al Quran, Ba'du Ba'da. Some of Quran explains the other bits of Quran, other parts of Quran. So you have to have whole Quran read properly with some teachers and in guidance of Rasulullah hadith, and then you would know what it means. It has to be taken as a totality, as opposed to individual ayat here and there. So that is why when you look at all the previous and subsequent ayat in Quran, you would realize. For example, we've already read in the beginning. And the end of this surah we would read as well. Allah says, so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the iman by iman in Allah and malaika and kutub and rusul. Life hereafter is not mentioned here. What is that? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take one or two points here and there to mean that I am mentioning one line you should know. What comes next? All of the aqaid, which are very categorically mentioned in the Quran and in the Hadith. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends to say in a very succinct manner that it is necessary to have faith in all the articles of faith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in multiple hadith mentioned those six articles of faith, which is agreed upon among the Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that one has to have belief in this. And how do you know about Iman bin Allah? How would you know who Allah is? Just by you knowing Allah? How do you know Allah? You cannot know Allah except through revelation, which comes through Prophet. So automatically, by knowing Allah and the life hereafter, you can only know these two aqaid through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through the Prophet of the time, through the book that has been revealed to them, without which you cannot understand the boundaries of Allah, Godness. Allah's being the date. Is that clear? How do we know what who is Allah? What is the introduction of Allah? Cannot know except through Rasulullah. And he would tell you through the revelation coming to him. So automatically, you have to believe in the Prophet. Believe him. It's so strange. The ayat has given to you by who? Prophet Muhammad said, so You know, by the way. This is ayat of Quran. I don't believe in this. In Quran, yet I would believe in this ayat. It's completely odd, isn't it? Yeah, I, I believe in the ayat actual message, but I do not believe in Quran. And I do not believe in the person bringing this news to me. I don't trust him. Yet, I would take the benefit of it. What a silly idea. Not at all. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And then, you look at so many different ayat. And if that was the case, another point, people of book, Jewish people, did they not believe in Allah? Did they believe in Allah or not? People of book, Jewish people, they do, they, even now they do. Christians, they do believe in Allah. They believe in the life hereafter. So why, what's the difference? Is what added benefit is with this ayat here? If that was enough, was it enough? That's why they've been hinted to the point that you have to have proper aqidah. It was for people who came to Islam and they have done some bad deeds in the past. They were concerned about that. There are certain narrations to suggest when they came to Islam, they were mocked by other people. Yes, what have you been doing all your life? You've just come to Islam. What did you do before? Whatever happened, happened. Forget about that. Now that you have become Muslim, if you did all the right thing, you'll be okay. Your past is sorted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it. This is what the hypocrite said in the beginning of the surah, ayat number eight. Yes? 54 ayat ago. <laughs> This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. They say they believe in Allah and last day, but they don't. Mean they do not believe in the aqidah of Islam. 
This is hypocrite. So Allah would hint to those aqaid, sometimes these two, sometimes another combination, two or three, in Quran, in a succinct way, hinting to all of the articles of Quran. And with action, Allah would just mention one action sometimes. It does not mean there's only one action that you have to do to go to Jannah. Rather, the action is a big rubric under which comes a lot of good deeds vis-a-vis -vis Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, vis-a-vis people. And you have to have all of those fulfilled and done properly. And then Allah says again in Surah Baqarah, وَمِنَ وَآمِنُوا بِمَا أَنزَلْتُ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ وَلَا تَكُونُوا أَوَّلَ كَافِرٍ بِهِ yeah. Believe, oh you people of book, do not be the one who rejects whatever is being revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is confirming what you already have. Believe in that book. That book, Allah is asking people of book to accept the book at several places. Another ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Ahlul Kitab, Qad Jaakum Rasooluna Yubayinu Lakum Ala Fatratim Minal Rasool Yen Taqoolu Ma Jaana Min Bashirin Wala Nadheer Faqad Jaakum Bashirin Wala Nadheer Wallahu Ala Kulli Shayin Qadeer Oh people of book, you, you have got a prophet coming to you now. A messenger has just come to you to make it very clear to you. Just many, he will just clarify after a break of prophethood. There was a fatra, there was a gap of prophet coming between Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam and to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So after this 570 years, you have Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So on the day of judgment, you shouldn't say that oh, we didn't have anyone to warn us. If Prophet wasn't needed, what is the point of this ayat? What is the question about why people of book would need a new Prophet which they demanded, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing that as a favor that we have sent to you a prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after the gap, so that you do not day, on the day of judgment say, we did not have anyone to warn us. We did not have anyone to give us glad tidings about Jannah. We were not aware. There you go, you've got a prophet. Follow what he says. Do what he is telling you to do. Another ayah. وَكْتُبْ لَنَا فِيهَا لِلْدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ إِنَّا هُدْنَا إِلَيْهِ قَالَ عَذَابِ أُسِيبُ بِهِ مَنْ أَشَاءُ وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِآيَاتِنَا يُؤْتِنُونَ And we have written down good deeds for those and in the life hereafter and in this world both and we have turned back to you. Allah said, my punishment I will afflict it on those who have done whatever they have done and I would decide who would get that punishment. And my mercy prevails. It extends to everywhere. It is so vast. And Allah said that I would write my mercy for those who adopt taqwa, piety, who pay zakat and who believe in our science, our books, our ayat. The belief in, belief in book is there. So you have to have that <laughs> belief. And finally, there's a narration from Abdullah ibn Abbas was Mufassir of Quran. He was the Tarjuman quran the one who would interpret Quran. He learned from Rasulullah when he was young. Then he spent time with Sayyidina Umar who became the most you know, seasoned student of Sayyidina. Umar he became the Tarjuman al Quran. He said that this ayah, in the Ladina Amanu, Ladina Hadu, and Nasara, this ayah, the one we are just going over, after that was revealed this particular ayat of Surah Ali Ibrahim. Wamayya Batari, Rayr al Islam, Deen, and Falay Yukubala min, Wahua fil Akhirat min al Khasirin, that whoever desires other than Islam as a religion, never will it be accepted from him, and he in the hereafter will be among the Losers. So if you say that it, it was only to become Muslim that you have to believe in book and everything else, well, then why are you loser on the day of judgment? If you did not need the belief in the book, the belief in all the articles of Islam and Iman, then why would you be loser? You can't be loser if what you think is right. So the 
many ayat of Quran. I just selected some of those. I hope that will clarify the concept so it doesn't confuse you. You will hear it more and more as we move on to get digressed from the mainstream Islam. People will just pick up on all those funny stuff and ideas from left, right, and center. So you may as well be prepared for these type of attacks and then craze. The certain people who adopted this, those who converted Muslims in the West, very nice and quiet people. I mean, you, I love them and their reading and their stuff. May I forgive them for their big mistake here, but they, mis they erred on that. With no disrespect to their overall you know, work and their contribution to propagate Islam that they had done. You know, they were, I hope that they wished, I, I wish that they, that they just followed what the tradition of Islam says rather than coming up with their own ideas. Unfortunately, this is what they have done. Some of them, without mentioning their name, that don't matter. Yes, so this was in order for the people who passed away. Now they accepted Islam. When Rasulullah is here, there's no way you can be getting any salvation except through Rasulullah. People from before, yes, for them it's fine. Rasulullah was never there. He didn't proclaim his prophethood. So like Waraka bin Nawfil, for example, like Zaid bin Abdur bin Nufail, they, they were amazing people. And they did not need to believe in the Quran. It wasn't revealed then. They did not need to believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa wasn't there, like as a prophet. So that's fine. But from before people, yes. Now, everyone has to have the gateway to Jannah through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That's the only door you can close to. And the book of Misty with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes? So hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, it will just clarify then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَكُمُ الْقُورِ And recall, when أَخَذْنَا إِذْ When أَخَذْنَا We took مِيثَاق A covenant, a firm covenant Come from you, your covenant We took your covenant وَرَفَعْنَا And we elevated we raise فَوْقَكُمْ above you up or mount to مَا آتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةِ When Meem Thakina is followed by Ba, you do Ikhfa Shafaw. It's a little bit prolongation. خُذُوا مَا آتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةِ Khudu, take, Amr, this is command. Take, ma, whatever is being given to you. Atayna, we gave you. Atayna, go. Be with huwa, with firmness. Hold it tight. Walkuru ma fihi la'allakum tattakoon. And uzkuru, and remember, ma fihi, what is in it, whatever is in it. Remember that. Practice. La Allah. By chance, kum you that taqoon become pious. You will attain taqwa by following what is in the, in, the, in the book. Raising the mount. The two explanations was it that it was actually raised a piece of mount too was taken out of their head. You remember when the story already been mentioned before, hinted to before, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Musa alayhi salam, when he came back, the people said, how do we know it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who you spoke to? Oh, we want to hear ourselves, just to verify. Okay, so Musa alayhi salam took 70 people from the different tribes and took them with him to Mount Sinai Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they say, Musa alayhi salam, how do we know it was Allah? You haven't done some sort of magic now. Today. How do we know it was Allah speaking to him? We want to see him. Hatta Allah jaraka. Came before. 
until we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naked with us, naked eyes. We want to see with our naked eyes how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Otherwise, we're not going to believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got the mount of portion of that on top of the head. About to fall on your head. Go and set that. For some duration, they just went to set that straight away and then keep looking up. You know, is it going to fall on our head or what? That's one explanation. Uh, that's literal. And the certain Mufassirun would say it was shaken because in the Quran, uh, in Surah A'raf, Allah mentioned, We shook the mountain in such a way it felt that it's about to crumble over us. Like, you know, if you are by the mountain and the mountain is shaking, how would you feel? Like, you know, you're talking about quite high mountain and you're just at the bottom of that and it's shaking. It's a full shake. You can imagine it's going to crumble over us. So that, that, that perhaps was another explanation. So whichever one, either it was a portion or a, you know, a, a, part, a part of that or it was the shaking of the mountain. Both, 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 both were possible. Question is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imposed upon them to accept this. When we say, uh, we, we, when we read in the Quran, La deen, there is no compulsion in Sharia. In deen, there is no compulsion. That's a valid question. But remember, it's, there's no compulsion in Sharia for those who have not accepted Islam yet. Once you've accepted Islam, then there is compulsion, obviously. It's like for those people who have not entered into madrasa, they have not got their enrollment in the school or university. For them, they could wander around, do whatever. Once you're inside the school and you're enrolled, you can't say, oh, why are you are compelling me to come and attend the class and attend the exam at that time? I want to do it at my own. You wish whenever I want to do it. No. <laughs> there is compulsion. There is certain compulsory acts you have to do. You have to dress up in certain way, especially in the past. You have to come at this time and you finish at that time. That's the term. You do it or not. Out you go if you don't want to. Inside, you come if you wanted to do it. But we have to follow the regulation. There is compulsion there. So they were believers. They believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Musa alayhi salam. For them to not keep up with the, in the dictates of Sharia at that point, that was complete transgression. They were made to follow whatever they themselves accepted as the faith. Is that clear? So we would not compel anyone to become Muslim. No one needs to become Muslim. That's up to them. If they wanted to become, Alhamdulillah, fantastic. We welcome them with open, open heart. Once they are into Islam, then they stay Muslim. They have to stay Muslim. Otherwise, consider treason. The treachery. It's a betrayal. You can't do that. You can't mock anything, especially Sharia, especially Islam. Okay, that's why apostasy is a capital punishment, it's a sin, big sin in all the religions Christianity, Judaism, Islam, all the previous religions. So, then, you turn away after this, after that. Even that wasn't enough. You raised this in the mountain and even then you turn away. So, if not, had there not been the fadl of Allah, if, the, if, it, were not, if it was not the fadl, the favor, the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alaykum on you, wa rahma and his rahma, rahmatuhu and his rahma, if it was not for the favor, grace, and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lakuntum min al khasirin. would both surely be, certainly be from among the losers. You'll be losers. You'll be from the losers. وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ الَّذِينَ اَعْتَدَوْ مِنْكُمْ فِي السَّبْتِ وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ الَّذِينَ اَعْتَدَوْ مِنْكُمْ فِي السَّبْتِ
and surely lam is actually qasmiya which means by Allah surely alimtum you know most definitely you know who who knows alimtum you know those people alladheena those i'tadaw who transgressed who went beyond the boundary crossed the line minkum from amongst you fissab on the day of sabat sab in arabic is sabat the saturday فَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ قُولُوا قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِينَ قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِينَ So we said لَهُمْ to them those who transgress قُولُوا be become قِرَدَة monkeys خَاسِئِينَ despised rejected dejected kicked out. So this story is very famous. It will come in Surah Araf in detail how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perhaps during the time of Dawood after his time, during his time uh, Imam Bagha we mentioned this, Allah knows. Israelites obviously they just wanted to get only one day for worship. It's too much. Every day our business is affected. Our life is on hold. We have to keep coming in and out of our business for prayer. So there was a group of people who were fishermen. They used to live by the riverbank. And they wanted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have a special day. Saturday is for you now. So do whatever you want. The rest of the six days, Saturday, no worldly work. Nothing. You just stick to the dedication. Only one day a week. The rest of the time, do whatever. This is what most people, most Jewish people do even now. Which means from Maghrib of Friday to the Maghrib of Saturday, nothing. Worldly. Can't even cook food. Can't do anything which is not religious, not ritualistic. Certain rules. So their restriction was for not fishing. So you shouldn't be fishing on that day. So they very happy because six days nothing to worry about, no fajr, no gohan, nothing. One day, that's okay, we can live for that. And they did for first few weeks, month, however long. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests people. Everyone is going to test, to be tested, no matter what, whichever situation you are in. You are in bliss, you think that you are in favor, you are tested with favor. You are in tough time, you are tested. When you are in tough time, you think, I wish this is, get out of my life. I want to be in a better situation. You come to a better situation what you initially thought and in that you said, oh, you know, I was better then. It was way better than this. And when you were there, you were dying to come out of that situation. This is the ingratitude men has. They will never be satisfied and happy. This is what the people of book always showed. And this is in the beginning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps showing us because this is one thing that would not leave you and keep you to be the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why this shukr is the highest station of slavery. And this is being put against the kufr, rejection. If you do not show true great gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are actually a kafir. With regards to shakir. Shakir is showing gratitude, being grateful. Ungrateful person is kafir. That's why they are opposite to each other. So the one who does not believe, and they are called kafir as well, this is because they do not believe in Allah and in essence, rejecting the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has revealed through his angels, through his prophets, through his books to you. And you are rejecting that favor. You are the worst ever ungrateful person. And that is why many practical things that we show our ingratitude or ungratefulness to. Is that, is that clear? Anyway, so this, this is what they did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested them. On Saturday, they would have plenty of fish. They could just literally lift and they could see because they used to live by the bed. They could see it. They said, you know what? The rest of the day, not much fish. This is a fantastic day. We can just, what do we do? 
Somebody started putting net on Friday before Maghrib. Keep it there for whole night, whole day, next day, and we on Sunday get all our fish. And they were very happy with that. Hila, this circumventing Sharia, twisting Sharia. Oh, we have got some resemblance there, isn't it? We all do that. And some of them dug a pit in the ground so that the waves would come loaded with fish and they'd just be drowned in that pit and the water would return back and they would come on Saturday. Fish are already done and dusted. They're dead. You can just connect them. You don't even need to wait for them to, you know, to get cooled down. They're already sorted, ready for you to just pick and have fun. A group of people censured them, rebuked them, saying, what are you doing? You're going against the Sharia. So no, 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 we are not doing anything on Saturday. The plan was that the deal was that we wouldn't do anything on Saturday. So what are we doing on Saturday? Technically, we are doing all halal stuff. So no, you know what you're doing. Don't do that. There was another group of people who did not say anything to them, but they would not, they were not part of them. So anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the first and the second group, not the third one. Allah didn't mention about them. We'll leave that for the time being. We'll discuss that in Surah Aram. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished these people. Uh, because then Allah says, be apes. So they became the young ones became apes. Imam Qatada, one of the greatest of the Mufassirun from earliest time. He said the young ones were made into apes and the older ones were into swine. And because Khanazir is also mentioned in the Quran that they, become, they became Khazir as well. They recognized their family, those who were advising them not to do it. They could see, they were like human beings, like, but they changed, but they could still think and see. And they did not live more than three days. They were crying and crying and crying, and they literally, out of their distress, tension, concern, they died in that agony over three days period. By the way, no one is their children of the monkeys. So don't, you know, disrespect our monkeys. They are, they are not the children of those monkeys. They were killed and then they died after three days. So we made it, this incident, an example between Baina between Yadai, two hands, Ha is two hands. Between is two hands. Yadain, Ilafa, Nune Rabi drops, Ha, Yadai, Ha. Okay. So we made an example between two. So in Arab, in Arabic language, Baina Yadai will come a lot in Quran. Baina Yadai, in between your two hands. What is in between your two hands? When you have something in between your two hands, means it's in front of you. So Arabic phrase for that is. Something in front of you. This is just in hand. Okay. Someone that you can see. Whatever is behind you. So front and back. So for the people who were there, it is an example for those people. And for whatever is behind it, behind the story, whatever people happen for us, this generation. And it is an advice, a mawaza, a lesson for pious people, for muttaqeen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.